We all know that Romans chapter 1 is a perfect description of the day that we're living in. All the wickedness, unbelievable sin. All these, all the transgender, sexual, alcohol, drugs, all this stuff, the movement that we're seeing today, look at how it started. Look at verse number 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful. Isn't that something? But became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. According to that verse, one of the things the Holy Spirit said that ruined the civilization was they wasn't thankful. They wasn't thankful. The second you quit being thankful for what God's done for you, you begin to become what we would call a spoiled brat. And that's what causes a nation uh, to come into the... Uh, do we have a generation of spoiled brats in America? Oh, my goodness. Uh, people are always asking now, have you made your Christmas list? Have you made your shopping list? Have you got your Christmas list? So I thought what I'd do is I'm going to give you my Thanksgiving list today. My Thanksgiving list. I wrote a few things down, and I'd like to preach on that today. My Thanksgiving list. Let me ask you a question. If somebody walked up to you any time of the year and said, just said the word Thanksgiving, what would be, be honest, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? It would be food, turkey, right? Isn't that true? And, and that, that's the way we are. That's immediately what comes to our mind. Nothing wrong with that. And we're planning on enjoying it too, if it's the Lord's will. But that Thanksgiving is the most scriptural of all the holidays that we celebrate. There's more scripture to support Thanksgiving than any of the others by far. There's always something you can be thankful for. Plenty you can. I heard about this uh, preacher one time. Every Sunday he would get up and thank God for the weather and thank God for that. Well, one Sunday it was storming terrible. It, well, the wind was blowing. The clouds was black. I mean, lightning, boom, thunder, wind. And uh, he got up. I mean, it was almost scary to have church. And one lady punched the other and said, I bet he won't thank God for the weather today. And he got up and he said, Ladies and gentlemen, it's good to be in the Lord's house, and we thank the Lord that it's not always like this. Amen. So he found something to thank God for. Ain't that right? I heard about one old woman. She said, I ain't got but two teeth, but I thank God they meet. That's right. They hit each other. When you close, you can at least chew something. And so you can always be thankful for something, brethren, and you sure can. Today I want to give you my Thanksgiving list. Yours might be different and maybe not in this order, but I'd like to give you mine, okay? Number one. Number one on the top of my Thanksgiving list is salvation. Salvation. The Bible said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? I'm telling you today, more than anything else, I'm thankful that I'm saved. Being saved is the greatest thing in the world, being saved. To be saved and know it is the most important and greatest thing on earth. You know what the best thing in the world is? To be saved and know it. If you're saved and you know you've been saved, that is the most uh, greatest thing in this world. If you mess up everything else, if you lose everything, if you're a flop in your education, if you're a flop in your lifestyle or, or your relationships or whatever, if you messed up everything else, if you're saved, you are not a failure in life. If you're saved, you got something right, brother, and you got the main thing right. Nothing can compare with it. Nothing can compare with just being saved. Uh, 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 we were talking the other day about that song, uh, when, he, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, what a day that'll be. Listen, people, we're saved by the grace of God. Do you know what that means? That means if you're saved and going to heaven, you are not going to hell. You are not going to hell. We are not going to hell. Thank God we are not going to hell. I don't deserve to go to heaven. I deserve to go to hell for what I've done. 
but because of Him, I'm saved and I'm not going to hell. I'm not going to hell. I'm so thankful this morning that I'm not going to hell. If everything else in life is bad, at least we're not going to hell. Hallelujah! We're not going to hell. I like that old song that said, When I shall see Him face to face and sing the story saved by grace. I, I, listen, when I shall see Him face to face and sing the story saved by grace. I'm thankful this morning. Number two. Number two, I want to say I'm thankful for my Bible. I'm so thankful for the Bible. The Bible is the greatest book on earth. The Bible's seen the birth of all the other books. It'll see the grave of all the rest of them. You don't have to worry about there being a mistake in this book. This book has been tried and proven. Where would we be without the Bible this morning? We'd be in a mess. Listen, uh, a man that don't read the Bible ain't no better off than a man that can't read it. If you, if, you, if you can read and don't read, you're no better off than a person that can't even read or don't have a Bible. You ought to spend time in your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. And read it and read it. I was talking about being saved there a minute ago. And I thought about, you know, when I get to heaven, I'll not be disappointed. Matter of fact, I'll say, oh my, if I'd have knew it was all, all this, I mean, I don't, I don't know what all we're going to see. I don't know what all we're going to do. I've had people ask me, they said, Brother Danny, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but what are we going to do up there forever and ever and ever? I don't know. I know we're going to praise God. I know we're going to worship. I know we're going to see the saints. We're going to talk. We're going to hear millions of stories of testimonies. And I promise you one thing, you won't even know what bored means one second. It will never be boring. It will never be boring. It's like plugged into 220 forever and ever and ever and ever and ever with perfect peace and perfect joy. Now I got thinking about this. Without the Bible, we wouldn't know that. And I got thinking about people in other religions and how sad it is. Like those terrorists, the people who um, flew those planes into the World Trade Center on 9-11. Listen, them guys had been trained all their life that if they please Allah, that they're promised a place in heaven with all kinds of unbelievable rewards and uh, all kind of stuff. And they believed that. And when they were flying those planes into them buildings, they were thinking this. They were thinking, in just a few seconds, I'll be in heaven. In just a few seconds, I'll be in heaven. Bam! And that thing blew up, and those buildings went scattered around, and people died, and those men died. Imagine the disappointment. Imagine the horror. Imagine the shock when they were lowered into the fire. And they say, is this in the building? No, this ain't the World Trade Center you're in. You're in hell fire. And demons start laughing. And they say, no, Allah, you lied to me. Muhammad, you was a liar. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, that happened. And here it is, 2016. They've been there 50 years and more and they never can get out I'm glad I've got a Bible that tells me how I can go to heaven and how I can know Jesus Christ and how my sins can be forgiven I'm thankful for my Bible Amen Precious is the book divine by inspiration given. Bright as a lamp, its doctrine shine to guide our soul to heaven. This lamp through all the tedious night of life shall guide our way until we behold the glorious light of an eternal day. They ain't nothing like the Bible. They never have been nothing like the Word of God. Nobody can beat it. Nothing other book can compare to it. I mean, the Bible contains the mind of God. It contains the state of man. It contains the way of salvation. Its doctrines are holy. Its precepts are binding. Its, its history is true. Its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise. Believe it to be saved. Practice it to be holy. Let it be a light to guide you. Let it be a, a food to support you. And let it be comfort to comfort you in, life's de in life and in death. It tells about heaven open and hell to closed. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, Everybody ought to read the Bible. You know who ought to read the Bible? The saved for strength. The strong for direction. The haughty for warning. The humble for exaltation. The troubled for peace. The weary for rest. 
the doubting for assurance, the sinner for salvation, the learned for humility, the ignorant for wisdom, the rich, uh, brother, for compassion, the poor uh, uh, for, co for comfort, amen, the dreamer for enchantment, the practical for counsel, the weak for strength. Everybody ought to read the Bible. You know how many hours you got to read the Bible? It takes 71 hours at pulpit reading spa speed to read the Bible. You have 5,800 hours that you're not asleep every day. If you sleep eight hours, you still got over 5,000 hours uh, that, that you're not asleep. Read that book. I'm so thankful. It's getting near the end of the year. We'll have a crowd of people that stand up here and say, I read God's Word this year. Thank the Lord for that. It's not too late. You got 70 hours left. Get in on it, brother. Enjoy the Lord. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. I'm thankful for my Bible this morning. Number three, I'm thankful for my church. I'm thankful for my church. You know, I'm thankful for our church. We're not perfect, but wouldn't you be awful lonely in a perfect church? You the only sinner there. I'm, yeah, I would, and you would too. I've heard a man told me one time. He said, "I just ain't found one good enough for me yet." And I said, "Well, if you ever find a perfect church, don't join it, because it wouldn't be perfect after you got in there. Ain't that right?" That's right. It wouldn't be perfect after I got in there. There is no perfect church, but I thank God for our church. You know, I, just what I mentioned a while ago, bringing out, I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. We thank God for what y'all doing with them buses. We thank God for what y'all doing with them buses. Somebody told me the other day, they, they just said, that's just so awesome. That's what they talk now. They said, it's just so awesome, preacher, that y'all drive, I do, oh, a man like that. Called me from South Carolina. He said, I, he said, I'm going to send you $200 for them bus kids. I said, praise God, brother. I'm going to start tomorrow morning raising money for them Christmas present. And he said, I just think it's amazing what y'all do with them buses. He said, I just can't believe y'all go out. And he said, it's dangerous out there knocking on doors. I said, yeah, it is. Uh, it's more dangerous not to, though, because uh, that's God's command. God's command. You listen. I mean, we. I told him. I said we got a little old girl, Vicky. She ain't in here. She's back yonder with a, about four on each hip right now, and she's about as big as that thing right there. And weighs ninety pounds, soaking wet. And I'm telling you what, brother. She goes and knocks on doors. They went all day yesterday. Her and Kelly and and uh, Reverend Gina there, uh, and uh, and boy, they they went and knocked on doors. And and Miss Molly. And boy, you know what? They brought a crowd. Brought new people here today. I thank God for our church. I thank God for our men. I thank God for our teenagers. I thank God for our musicians. I thank God for our laymen, our deacons, our Sunday school teachers. I seen Brother Ray raise his hand back there a while ago when we seen him. You know why? He's got boys in the armed services serving our country. Me and our Brother Roy served. Brother Wayne served. Others in here have served in the service. And I'm glad, Brother, we've got a church with some men that are still men and backbone. Listen, we don't need to turn into feminine feministic uh, weirdos, brother. It's men ought to be men and women ought to be women. I'm glad we got a church where we still have that. Say amen right there. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad we got a church. I'm glad somebody had the lights on the night I got saved. I'm glad that somebody believed in having church. I'm glad somebody paid the bills up there at Nebo Baptist Church and they opened the doors and had the, had the, uh, the lights on and the preacher got up and preached. I got saved because of church. I'm going to tell you something about church. You people that think you're too good, I see people on the Internet and they make comments. Well, then they say, I just don't go to church. They're all hypocrites. They're all after money. They're all after... Listen, they're the hypocrite. If you let a hypocrite stand between you and church... You're a bigger hypocrite than they are. Amen. Amen. One man said, if, if you let a hypocrite come between you and church, he's closer to God than you are. Amen. I, I don't care if every hypocrite in town goes to church. I'm going to church. This is my father's house. I'm going to be here if I'm able to worship God and get what God's got for me. Amen. I tell you something, brother, the church has been mocked. 
and then laughed at, scorned at. They make fun of us all the time on TV. They laugh and mock the church of God. They never say it about any other religion, but they make fun of Christians day and night. You know what that lets me know? The spirit of the devil knows which one's right. And brother, he knows where I, well, he knows one to cuss. And I'm going to tell you something here tonight, or this morning. Everybody here was saved in a church or because of one. Everybody here was saved in a church or because of one. You say, oh, I was saved in a mission, preacher. That was because of some church got it started. I saved on the mission field. I've saved in the army, preacher. That was because some church put Bibles and we reached somebody who reached you. Everybody here is saved in a church because it's churches that start relief centers and missions and feed the hungry and charities and hospitals and, and places like that. It's churches, brother. Uh, listen, uh, listen, I'm glad we got a place where we can come and get strength. Just like them up here singing a while ago. Did you feel that in here a while ago? You feel that spirit in your while ago? It ain't like that everywhere, y'all. We ought to thank God for our church. That once in a while that breeze comes through here. That's not our imagination. There's somebody in here besides us. And I'm telling you, he's bigger than me and you. And he's here today. Thank God that we've got a church where the Lord still blesses once in a while. Uh, I have people come in once in a while. They say, Brother Danny, I've been tempted all week. I've been in, in, in college or I've been at work all week or I've had to go here and I, the devil's been on me all week long and I just feel terrible and they sound like they're right and I'm slipping and I'm getting backslidden and everything and I just got to thinking if I can just make it to Sunday, if I can just walk in them doors, God will help me. That's why we ought to thank God for a church. You people on the Internet that criticize all the time for having a church building, they say, you're supposed to have it in your house. What are you going to do if a bunch of people get saved and you can't put them in your house? Ain't nothing wrong with having a building that we meet to worship in. Them people are crazy. Now, the building ain't the church. That ain't, this ain't the church. Sitting in here is the church. They ain't no different than that cheat rock than a cheat rock in a pool hall. It's the church. It's the people that sit in here. And I'm thankful for my church this morning. Number four. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my family. Thank God when it comes right down to it, that's all you got, your family. When you're in the hospital, brother, when somebody dies, when it comes right down to it, brother, you'll look around and there'll be your brothers, your sisters, your kids, your mom, your dad. You ought to thank God for your family. Many of you here this morning have a family that's uh, less than perfect. We all do. We all have uh, dysfunctions in our families, right? We all do. But I'm telling you this morning, glory to God, I'm thankful for my family. My girls this morning, uh, what a blessing they've all three been to me. They're not perfect, and I'm not, I'm not perfect as their daddy. But we've got a bond that the devil or hell can't tear apart. There's just something about your family. My mom and dad done gone on to heaven. I, my sister's up there. I thank God for my sister. Y'all just don't know what a sister is. She ain't never had one like mine. My sister, Lord, she took care of mom when she was sick all them years and waited on her hand and foot. I mean, and kept my mom from having to live out her days uh, maybe in a rest home somewhere. My sister, and she took care of me too uh, when I needed it. Uh, she took care of me. She'll call me every once in a while. She'll say, Danny, do you need anything? And I say, uh, yes. Uh, no, I don't. I say, I, I say, no, I say, I'm fine, Daddy. And she, she really does that. I thank God for it. I thank God for my cousins and, 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 and my, my other family. I mean, we're not a perfect family, but I thank God for my family. I thank God for my wife. Y'all just wouldn't believe all the stuff that she does. I uh, all day visiting. Yes, it works every day, but it just, just stuff I can't even name. Thank God she's a help me. Thank God she loves the Lord. Thank God, she supports me 100%. And if you say anything bad about me, she'll pop you in the nose because she's a girl and she can get away with it. I thank God for my wife. I mean that. I mean that. And now that we have these kids staying with the Lord, it's got even more interesting. And she's got more work. But I tell you, thank the Lord for our family. Thank the Lord for your family. I want to say, girl, come to her mom one time, she said, her mom's in there washing dishes, washing dishes, washing dishes. And she said, Mama, don't you get tired of washing dishes all the time? 
And she said, honey, I ain't washing dishes. I'm building a home. That's what your family is. You're building a home. You're building a home, y'all. Thank God for your family. I read a story about this fellow by the name of Thomas Stewart. Uh, he went to McGill University in Montreal, Canada, was going to become a lawyer. Brilliant young man. But he had an accident, and it put out one of his eyes. This is a true story. Put out one of his eyes, and he went to a surgeon. They, 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 was gonna, they said, we're going to have to take that eye out to get all your support on your good eye. For some weird freak of accident, they got the bandage wrong, and he took out the good eye. So he lost both eyes. And Thomas was determined to go to college. And he went to college in Montreal, Canada, and his brother went with him, William, William Stewart. And William took Thomas, his brother, and he read the textbooks to him because he was blind, and he read every word to him, helped him with his test, helped him with his homework, stayed with him. They both went through law school, and Thomas graduated at the top of his class blind. His brother was second, and nobody could do something like that for you but your family. Buddy, when it comes right down to it, your family will be there for you. You say, well, mine won't preach. You got some of them that will. And if you do, you ought to thank God for them. I thank God for my family. But let me say this hurriedly, and I'm done. I thank God for my country. It's my, shop, it's my Thanksgiving list instead of shopping list. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. Crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. There are socialistic, globalist, communist, CNN, that's a communist news network, and college professors that are bent, working day and night to take away the Christian heritage of our country. History books are being rewritten to take out the mention of God. There were some problems in our forefathers. All our forefathers wasn't sh shouting happy saints of God living for the Lord. They all had their problems. But I'm telling you, there's an effort being made today to erase God out of America and our, our founding and our fathers. And Christopher Columbus said this. You know what Christopher Columbus said? Quote, you'll never hear this in high school or college, so you better get it here. Quote, it was the Lord who put it into my mind. I could feel his hand upon me. There is no question, but my inspiration was from the Holy Spirit. You say, well, I've never, I figured you had. You know why? They don't want to give God the glory. And I thank God for America. Let's, listen, people, our country's far from perfect, and it's in a mess today. I'm telling you, uh, this, this election we had the other day, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, Shouting happy. I'm not terrible sad. I, we'll see, I reckon. We'll see. Pray for our new president that God will give him the wisdom to know what to do. I, but I'm telling you, brother, if God don't do something for this country, we're in trouble. But I still would rather live here than anywhere else. Amen? Amen. All these people that's criticizing being, I hate America, I hate America. Get you a ticket out, man. Go live in Iraq or Saudi Arabia uh, for a couple of months and see how you like it there. Say amen right there. Our boys fought and bled and died so they could have that, that flag right there. And our flag stands for freedom. I don't worship the flag, but I thank God it gives me the freedom to stand up here and preach on Sunday. And if you burn that thing, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You little brat, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Fire boys bled and gave their life. I don't agree with all the decisions the country makes either. I don't, I don't agree with everything the old administration, the new administration. There's a lot. But I thank God we live in a country where we can have freedom to go to church and honor God and speak our mind. Amen? Amen. I was absolutely... Those little babies crying... Because the election didn't go there. Oh, my goodness. Have you and your college students had to have therapy dogs and cocoa? They got excused from their tests if they were experiencing stress. You say, well, brother, listen, a lot of elections ain't went my way. 
descendant, brother. I, I, was for, I was for Ben Carson. Say amen right there. Amen. But thank God, I'm not going to cry and wah, wah, wah. Lord, have mercy, people. Thank God we live in a country where we get to vote. Amen. That's what happens when every kid gets a trophy. That's what somebody said. They said, now, one good thing, the drought in California is over. All the liberals' tears fill the rivers back up. <laughs> Say amen right there. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm glad for our country. Listen, we disagree. We disagree on a lot of things. But glory to God, you can't do this in a lot of countries. You can't stand up here and preach the Bible in a lot of places. You know what they do to Christians in Syria? They cut their heads off. Or we could talk about the, the persecution and the, and the German Nazi concentration camps where one man had three boys and they hung him up by his hands like this and took a took pistol and shot his hands off. The boys screaming and hollering. Daddy lost his mind, went crazy. We look at the little country where they where they take the women in the, in the days of the morning. That still goes on, y'all. Take a saw. Start sawing your neck. Saw your head. Just because of what I've said enough right here this morning to get me killed in a lot of countries. You better thank God for this country. We got our faults. But brother, I don't, I don't see none of that crowd moving. They claimed they would. That'd be a blessing. It'd be a blessing if Bill Maher and Whoopi Goldberg and everyone of them packed up and went and moved to Canada. Hallelujah. Help yourself. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, we ought to thank God for our country. They took them boys in Auschwitz, Germany, in the stone quarries, 90-foot stone wall, in the persecution, and then people lined up up there and had Jews lined up up there jumping off that 90-foot wall because they couldn't stand the torture that they were being subjected to, and they splashed their blood out on them rocks. And them Germans walked down to there complaining, saying, y'all are getting too much blood on the, on, the, on the rocks. It's bothering our customers. Quit that. That's already happened. I could tell you stories where they took pregnant women and tied them down, sliced their stomach open, let the pigs eat the baby out of the, out of the live mother and baby. Hey, hey, you ought to thank God that flag still waves and the Holy Ghost is giving us the opportunity to do what we're doing. I'm not, I know our country's in bad shape, but I thank God we get to live here. You women have rights. You get to vote. You get to be treated with respect. It ain't like that in other countries. You ought to thank God for the influence of that book. My, Chris, my, my Thanksgiving list is I'm thanking God for my country. If you're here this morning, if you're here this morning, and I know there'll be thousands of people here this message, it's not like it used to be. Whatever I say here, it goes all over the world now. If you're here listening out there or wherever, and you're not saved, if you don't know that you're saved, maybe you didn't understand what these people was doing up here a while ago. That's how simple it is. Salvation is simple. It's free. It ain't cheap, but it's free. Jesus paid an awful price for your sins, so you can be saved. If you're here this morning and you've been saved a long time ago and your life's all messed up and you ain't been living right, get down here this morning and say, Lord, I thank you that I still live in North Carolina. We don't only live in the best country. We live in the best part of that country. These mountains protect us from hurricane. We have clean air. We did until a few weeks ago. We, we, got, we got clean water right here in this part of the country. How long has it been since you just got down? Remember now, it's a sin not to be thankful. That's my Thanksgiving list. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Amen. The coming.